and welcome back to some Elite Dangerous. On this video we're going to be focusing around mining and all the things that you're going to need to know to be a successful miner. And first things first we're going to want to talk about the ship that you're going to need because not all ships are designed equally obviously. If you start off with a Sidewinder well you're going to have less capacity but it's still possible for you to make money off of it however I do recommend that you probably get into a better ship through bounty hunting or some other means. It's much more quicker and it'll be much easier for you overall. Okay, so one of the ships that are easy to get, it costs very little, so if you lose your ship in your mining process, it's not going to hit you in the pocketbook too much. And then on top of that, it's got massive rooms for expandability when you're starting out, and that's the Cobra Mark III. For starters, we could put two medium hardpoint lasers, so that way when we start to hit the asteroid, with these mediums as opposed to the smalls we'll be able to get ore out of it much more quickly and then we still have space for some multi cannons if we need it for some light harassment from the NPC pirates we'll be able to defend ourselves and if they so happen to have a missile launcher or whatever we have some point defense and some chaff launcher so we can protect ourselves against any gimbal tracking weapons alright so for the internals what are you gonna need Okay, for starters, you're going to want to have a cargo rack that's nice, you know, it gives you at least 32 space, which is really good. It'll give you more than enough, so you'll want to upgrade to that. Of course, a shield generator. A decent shield generator wouldn't hurt you because sometimes, depending on the alignment or rotation of the asteroid, it can sometimes swing around and actually smack you. So, having a shield, if you get some hits, can save you, so that's something you might want to consider. Some people decide to roll YOLO it without it anyway, so who cares. And then there's your refinery. This is a must-have component. You cannot, you can't mine without it. I mean, you can still hit the asteroids, but you won't be able to pick up anything, and that's pretty useless. Let's look for another refinery here to compare it to. Okay, there's this other refinery here. It's 162,000. It's a B rating, class 1. But... If you notice, the refinery bins are three. That means that you can hold a maximum of three different resources that you're currently processing. So, for instance, whenever you pick up an ore, it gives you 24% gold. That would be a good hit. You put that to process, and it goes into your reservoir, and from there, you have 24%. So when you pick up another one, you'll keep on doing this until it reaches 100%. Well, this gives you the ability to pick up more than one ore, up to three for this one. The one I currently have at the time is, let me see, it's a rating A class two, and I believe this one has six. Let's see if I can find it. All right, yeah, there it is. It has six refinery bins. I've even seen some that have eight. So, depending on how deep you're going to get into this, is how much you're going to want to invest into that. For now, I say start off with a smaller one. Just get your feet wet. See if you like it first. Because mining, right off the bat, I'll say it's not for everyone. And there are going to be improvements in the future, and more people will be more open to it. But right now, there's no, nothing holding you back from experimenting and learning. Okay, and then we have the detailed surface scanner. This is going to make your job a whole lot easier. For starters, it's going to allow us to go to different extraction sites and scan down the different rings and see what exactly they offer and what their yield rates are. And that's very important because if not, you're going to be basically flying blind. So this is something you're going to want to pick up. And then also an advanced discovery scanner, depending on how high you go, is really going to determine your ability to easily scan a system. From what I remember, it was about 500 light seconds that you would be able to scan down with the basic discovery scanner. And then from there, it goes up to about 1,000 light seconds, and I think 1,500 light seconds. It's basically system-wide when you get to the advanced discovery scanner. However, it is going to cost you more money to be able to get into it. In fact, let's take a look at the price for that. It's going to cost you $1.5 million. So you could see if you start to spend a lot more money, even this basic ship could start to become a whole lot more. But you don't have to start with this. You could start with something that's a lot less. However, this advanced discovery scanner coupled with the detailed scanner is going to make your life a whole lot easier in actually being able to find sites. Now, that brings us to our next point. What kind of sites 
are we looking for? Let me exit out of here and we'll take a look at the system map. One of the things that I recommend is that you come over to economy and you come to extraction, you leave that checked in. Some people also talk about, I think industrial is another site that they take a look at to see if they can find any any kind of asteroid belts or ring planets and stuff like that. But I find extraction is plenty enough because, I mean, take a look. Look at how many you can actually find. All those red dots that you see are extraction sites. And they're almost guaranteed to either have a ring in them or an asteroid belt or something that you can mine. So that's something that you're going to want to take a look at. Look at this one. It's even called ring. I wonder if that has anything in it. Okay, but before we get into that, there's some little icons here I want to explain to you what they're for this one is obviously purchase trade data this if you hit it it'll show you where it exports its resources to again wherever you see that light moving towards an object that means it's exporting to that area and then if you come back in here if we try to look at the system view we can't see anything so obviously we purchase some exploration data and then from there we can go into the system view the system view will give us a very good detailed look at what this place offers for starters, we could see who it was first discovered by, Al Walker. And from here, we could see that it has major reserves, and the ring type is actually metal rich. Now, that brings us to what we want to actually look for. What are the ring types that we want to see, and what kind of reserves? Major reserves is actually really good. I think that's the second highest. The next one you can get to is pristine. Pristine is actually the, the target that's like the holy grail you find that great but you also have to couple that with the ring type and what you're looking for is not metal rich what you're looking for is metallic metallic is the one that will actually give you the gold the platinum the palladium and something else that those are the ones that are worth money and you can find those throughout that ring system however with metal rich you have a chance of finding I think the most is gold and then it'll give you minerals other minerals that will that are valuable so this one's a mineral rich or excuse me metal rich major reserves and then we come over here and this one is actually major reserves but we don't know what the rings type is so this is where that discovery or detailed scanner and the discovery scanner is going to come into play when we arrive there we scan this down and we'll be able to unlock the information of what type of ring system it has if it has metallic then great you could start mining there if you don't mind going from a major reserve some people only prefer pristine but the ones you definitely want to stay away from is depleted common and i think there's another one just before major there may be I don't know but then there's major and pristine those are the two that you really want to target major being your minimum pristine being your absolute target and with that said there's actually a system I discovered that I'd love to show you in fact let me plot a course to it and then we'll take a look at it okay I plotted a course to the system that we're gonna need however we're just gonna go ahead and cut there instead of you watching me fly there because it's quite a few jumps away and when we get there, I promise you it's an actually a pretty good system that I discovered. And I wasn't the first one to discover it, but I discovered it on my own. So, you know, hey, for what it's worth. But somebody else did discover it first. And that's good for them. They got their name on a fantastic system. All right, well, we're going to jump over and I'll see you there. Okay, we're about to arrive on the system that I was telling you about. Look at that sun. Mm, fantastic. Or star, I should say. Let me just pull away from this and we'll take a look at the system itself on the system view. I promise you it's a fantastic site. At least for a miner's eye. Let's pull away from this a little bit more. Alright, we're just going to pull back here. Bring it down and let's open up that system view. Take a look at this baby. Look at how many rings there are in this. For mining, this is absolutely what you want to see. Look at that. And not just rings, because there's plenty of other systems I've seen with lots of rings. However, this one is quite special. Look at this. This first one right here is a metallic ring, and it's pristine reserves. So right off the bat, from arriving at the star, you can already get your hands on some pristine reserves metallic rings. 
It has another one. It's rocky, but here's the good thing. It's the outer ring. The inner ring is actually the one that's metallic, and that's even better because you always want to get that inner ring instead of the outer ring. From what I hear, it has better yield rates. Okay, and then the next one is a metal rich. So if it had something that you needed there that was metal rich, you've got one here, and it's pristine reserves. And then finally, or not finally, next actually, we have another one that's metal rich, pristine reserves. Ah, oh, being inter interdicted. Fantastic. Good time for this. Let's try and see if we can get out of it. If not, we'll submit and then we'll just get out of here. Alright, just turn in on it. Come on, you got this baby. I think I got this one. Maybe? Yep, you got out. And <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy that deep space, dumbass. Alright, so let's go back into that system view. And take a look at the other planet. Or gas giant. Okay, so now we have this next one. That's pristine reserves again. And it's a metallic ring. So you've got another one. And it's got a metal rich ring on the outer ring if you need it. So there you go again. And then there's this little guy over here. Right now, he's not too useful because it's a rocky type, but in the future, as they put more emphasis in things and they expand the mining, hey, there's a rocky, pristine reserve right there again. And before I get into any of this, you may be wondering what some of these things that I'm mentioning are. Pristine reserves basically indicates how much yield you're going to get every single time you hit an ore. It doesn't always mean you're always going to get a fantastic 30, 50, or 75% yield off of every ore. But it does mean that it increases your chances of being able to get the more valuable metals out of it. Okay, so let's go down here and take a look at the next one. This one, I actually didn't get a chance to scan this one down, did I? Because what happened is, somebody else discovered this system first, but I found this system on my own. I actually targeted this system, and I said, okay, I'm going to work on a, on a circular path or a spiral path out from this sector. I'm going to keep taking a look at all the other extraction points. And I did that in quite a few other sectors over here, for instance. Let's type in Akinar and see how far away I am. Okay, so it's 214 light years away. When I was in this system and anywhere near, you could see where my ships are located at. I checked all of these surrounding areas and I kept trying. Now, you could probably still find some around there. That doesn't mean that there isn't any. But as I kept trying near the core worlds, I kept noticing everything was depleted. I found fantastic systems with around six or seven different ringed planets. And they were metallic and they were metal rich. And yet, still, they were only giving me depleted resources. And it was getting frustrating. So I said, screw it, I'm going to go much further out, and I eventually went out to 200, and I picked this spot. Because from this spot, I was going to go further on out and check. And when I found, when I arrived here, I said, okay, let's take a look. I did a D-scan, and lo and behold, I found this. Oh, excuse me. And lo and behold, I found this. A fantastic system. And that's not the only one. Let's, let's go ahead and discover that one later. But we also have another metallic pristine reserve and a rocky planet right there and over here this last one is a rocky planet it's a bit of a dud but hey who knows they might in the future discover more or add more stuff that you could do with mining maybe icy might become valuable at one point but for now let's go ahead and start hitting 14 orionis one let's head there and do some mining you don't need to go to the extraction spots the extraction spots are actually loaded with pirates and stuff like that so you may if you want to be more peaceful at your mining you could come out to your own custom site all you need to do is get close to the outer ring now no you're gonna want to bring your throttle down all the way right now I'm just it's all the way back and yet I'm still traveling close and you don't even need to manually drop out you can just gradually go into it and it'll drop out because it's too close and then from there you could just aim on down and start finding the rocks and chip away the first thing you're gonna wanna do is chip away at the asteroid and try to get a sample of what it gives because if you see nothing but a bunch of useless minerals and you're really not gonna wanna go for it just move on to your next asteroid 
Keep sampling them like that until you find a good one. And another thing that I recommend is that you don't go for the asteroids that are spinning constantly or spinning real fast. You want to go for the stationary ones because those are easier to mine since the resource isn't going to be flailing off in all sorts of different directions. This one's still moving a bit too fast, but we're going to take that as an example anyway. We'll do this one, and then we'll do one that's not spinning as much. All right, let's switch over to our mining lasers. You want to keep pointing it in the same direction, not cut a line. That way they can more or less fall from the same path. All right, this one's going to get you Bertrandite and Galite. You don't want that, so you just move on. That one over there looks like it's not moving too much at all, so let's boost and go over there. Take a look at that. Alright, this one, as you can see, is kind of rotating in that direction. It's orbiting. What you want to do is get onto its side. Think of it like a donut. You want to shoot at the, or a tire. You want to shoot at the middle portion of the tire because that's the spot that's spinning less. It's the least amount of spin that it's receiving. So you kind of want to get that spot, and then from there, get in close to it, and just start zapping away. This looks good enough. Get a sample. Oh yeah, this is good stuff. Palladium. Alright, so you could see since I shot them in more or less the same spot, you, you see that they're flailing off in the same direction. Now you're going to have a time limit on how fast you can do this or how long you could take to do this because well they're deteriorating as time goes by so what you want to do is line up so that they're in a nice line formation now when I was doing that earlier I should have probably bursted my laser a little bit so that way they wouldn't pop out as close to each other there would be more of a gap between them and you're gonna to want to open up your your scoop and then aim with it not from your main view here but on the bottom view you can see where that crosshair is and that yellow box and you want to aim at it and not go above 30 speed but the slower generally the better and now that you've collected that you're going to want to look over to your right side and go over to cargo and then from there you're going to want to click on this and process that you don't want to vent it because that's going to throw it away and then from there you can back up don't turn, don't do anything, just back up. In fact, I backed up a little bit too much. And then you're going to want to go towards it. Alright. Slow and gentle. Hopper's empty because we already have that processing right now. Okay. Align this one and do the same exact thing all over again. Once you have it collected like that, as long as you're not picking up things you don't need, you could just keep on going. See there, it picked up something else. So we wanna take a look at it. Actually, we already filled one up. We got good yields out of that. All right, let's aim that. Let's work a little bit faster because this is going to deteriorate and there we go we got that whole line pretty quickly and we already filled one up and we're 77 percent towards filling up another one and that's one ton each one that you fill up is a ton so this one's gonna take you to two tons and now we can just aim at that one spot again and let's see if it gives us anything sometimes it's it kind of expires and doesn't oh yeah we're getting more Fantastic. How much more? Well, we'll find out here in a second. So if you shoot it like that, it'll come out in a line. And then from there, all you need to do is align yourself to that line. And you can just start scooping one right after the other. Close that scoop so you can navigate a little bit better. Alright, so here, you're going to want to pull away just a bit. This gets a little tricky lining it up when you're angled like that, but eventually you'll get an eye for it. I'm still working on that myself. Not necessarily the best at this, 
by any stretch of the imagination, but it's one of those things that as you keep practicing, you get better and better at it until eventually it becomes second nature to you. It's kind of like becoming a truck driver, you know? Okay, we're gonna about to collide with that. Let's open up that field of cargo scoop and align this. Gently. Hmm. Something feels a bit off. Oh, I'm going backwards. What a genius. Herp derp. Alright. Just aim that there. Okay, I was locked into one of the far ones. So that's going to make my job a whole lot more difficult. And that could potentially end up costing me resources. Okay. Scoop that one up. Okay, great. Furthermore, we can keep on picking them up. You want to be consistent. Don't take any breaks. Keep on doing this until you finish with that asteroid. Okay, fantastic. We were able to pick them all up. So the next step is to test this one out again. I think it's just completely depleted now. It's not going to give me any more. Yeah, that's not going to give me any more. So let's back away. Make sure to close that scoop. Make sure that you don't... You don't end up screwing yourself you're gonna be wondering why can't I move fast <laughs> let's take a look at him he looks like he's not moving at all which is absolutely fantastic yes that's what we like to see okay so let's look for uh, that nice little flat spot I wonder if that one I wonder if shooting at it here is gonna come right back to us Let's find out. Take a sample. Okay, this one's indite in gold. Alright, we're gonna want some of that. Okay. Remember not to take out too much, not more than you can chew. But it's generally coming in our location, so all we have to use is our our thrusters and we can align this quite easily. All right, let's open up our scoop. Keep aligning it until it's right where we want it to be. And let's move in. Pick that baby up. Move that one a little bit. It's not good. Okay, we're going to come back to cargo here, and we're going to process the gold. That we want. Indite, we really don't want. So we jettison that. You have to fly a little bit blind, if you will, when you're doing that. You want to back up just ever so gently, so we that way you could realign. Let's just take the indite now so we don't have to keep jettisoning it every time. That way, we can just keep it going. Oh, alright. I didn't bump it too hard. You don't want to bump it too hard because if you send that thing flying, you're screwed, essentially. One of them got bumped because he's all the way out there. Resources collected, so gold. Fantastic, we got another ton of it. So yeah, a lot of people consider this boring, and it can be, yes. Especially if you're not making any money in return. One, the first time I ever did this, I actually ended up coming back and getting like 5,000 resources. I was so disgusted. I was like, what is this crap? I spend 40 minutes of painstakingly trying to do this and I end up with nothing so I ended up discovering it's just my methods were all wrong 
the type of resource extraction sites that I was going to were depleted. I didn't realize that, all that kind of good stuff. Okay, so we have that going. Now we can just aim right back, right back at this bad boy and try to get whatever we can out of it left. Okay, we seem we're getting four of them. That's the maximum we're getting. Let's back up a bit. And start to align ourselves. What the hell's that over there? Looks like a rock or something. Towards the left, right over there. Okay, so we want to find the one that's closest to us. It's if I had 3D enabled, that'd be a little bit easier. See, the yawing on this one is just absolutely atrocious. You see that? If I had the Lacon Type 6, I'd be able to yaw it a whole lot easier. Oh, great. I screwed up. Big time. Alright. I was too busy eyeballing it rather than actually picking it up. And I just scattered the other one. So this is going to be a case in exactly what you shouldn't be doing. Oh. And to continue that lesson, we just did that. Blood. Oh, please, are you serious? This thing can be a lesson in frustration if if you don't approach it right. And it'll cost you money because these resources will disappear over time. Okay, resources collected. We're gonna have to refine that. Let's keep it going. Hopefully we can get these last two and we won't lose any. Okay. If I can get this last one, we'll be good. Our screw up didn't cost us anything. able to adjust it so we got them all fantastic so there's some leeway in. and one of the things that you can enjoy about mining the most is some of the views that you have are just absolutely fantastic I mean look at that I'm gonna hold it there for a second because I know YouTube compression if you move too much kind of garbles up the image but look at that it's absolutely fantastic all right so that's the basic principle of what you're gonna want to do you're gonna want to make sure to get a stationary asteroid as much as you can you're going to want to sample it and then from there when you actually go to shoot it make sure it's not rotating as much and if it is try to find that center portion where the rotation is as least as possible so that way they line up perfectly and if you don't screw up like I did at the end there you can actually go in and scoop them up easily back up a bit realign and pick them up and you can keep doing exactly that the next step is obviously once you have your hopper full over here and you have plenty of gold and palladium and platinum and all that good stuff what are you gonna do with it where are you going to take it to well that is where my previous video comes into play let me just get to somewhere a little bit safe because sometimes these asteroids they can move and when they move they can kill you I've had one rotate right into me and just bash me down to 11% and I was like, ooh, never again, never again. Boost once more and then we'll stop there and I'll take a look at how we can sell this quickly and efficiently and for top dollar, because that's the important thing. What good is it? Now you're going to have to start looking around where you're going to sell it to. That's going to be terrible. Okay, so we have an option of gold and palladium. Let's use that. All right, this method obviously involves alt tabbing or using your tablet or smartphone to bring this up, but I covered it in a previous video. And it's Thread's trading tool. Yes, it can help you out here. Let's just go there. Thread's. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. Okay, so we're going to come here and Thread's trading tool, the area you're going to want to look at is in lists. And then you're going to tell it I want to sell a commodity. Then you're going to name your current system. Right now, I'm in 14i Orionis. All right. Now we're going to sell. Let's see. Let's take a look at what Palladium sells for. Here it is. Oh, clicked the wrong one. Well, for the max range, we're going to want to start 
on something small, but not too small. We want to see what the different prices we can get for our resource. So let's go 100 light years. And we can exclude outposts here. So if you're flying around in some bigger ship, there's your option. Okay, so now we query it and we can click this to get the highest price. There's something that we can get that is, let's see, if we drop down over here, this one's only 74 light years away and it's only 1,571 light seconds away from the star. So that one seems better. We're going to want to go to Gabium, Gabia, at Lee Horizons. Now, let's see. We come back here. We take a look at navigation. Did I cut that? I didn't cut that at all, did I? Let's copy it. Paste. And there we go. Should be that distance away. Perfect. We could hit that, but as you can see, I'm going to be out of fuel before I even get there. Let's try it on an economical route. replot there we go we can make it and we'll be able to refuel there since we'll be able to sell there as well but it is going to take us many more jumps so what i'm going to do now is go ahead and travel there and i'll catch you there because i don't want to have to make you sit here and wait another 30 minutes for me to arrive all right i'll see you over there okay so let's go into starport services and see what we can get out of these resources i didn't collect much because it was just you know a demonstration purpose for you all right, let's go down to metals. There's palladium, 14,365. Let's see what Thrud was saying, 14,366. So it's a little bit less, but it's still very high up there. So we can sell those. And immediately we just made 43,000 off of just that alone. Fantastic. And then as for gold, we can make 10,376. That's pretty good. I'm going to take that. So that's another 41,000. So right there, just off that little bit of mining, we already made 80-something thousand credits. And that shows you how you can make it mining profitable. It may not be fun. It just depends on who you are and what your interests are. I kind of liken it to World of Warcraft's fishing if you ever experienced that where it's the most boring thing to do in that game but for some reason if you get into it and you see that number rising every single time you level up your fishing it just gets a little zen and you just want to keep progressing on that but not everyone can do it nor does everyone want to do it so looking back what are the things that we want to summarize and see that we need well, for starters, let's go into outfitting. Let's get in there real quick. Some of the things you're going to want to make sure is, of course, to get a ship that's very viable for your mining. And the cheapest, most nicest solution that can carry you out for a very long way is, of course, the Cobra Mark III. It's a fantastic ship for that. It's got the cargo, it's got the hard points, it's got everything you need, really. And with that, we're going to need some mining lasers. Now you saw with the mining lasers, you need to be a little bit careful because if you pulse it too quickly and you get that mineral out of it or those metals out of it too quickly, they become so close to each other that you don't have any leeway. You can't just, you try to pick up one, but the front nose of your ship is going to pop the other mineral ore out there and you're going to have to be playing chase all over again. So one of the things that I say that you may want to do with your mining laser is pulse it. Give a little bit of a, a distance between each cycle that more ore will pop out just so that they'll have that distance with each other. After that, of course, you're going to want your, your two cargo capacity upgraded to 16 and 16. A shield generator just in case you're starting off. You may not have a lot of money. And if the asteroid collides with you, this could save you. Even if it knocks out your shield, you could still be left with just a bit of health left so you can get back to a station and repair. And then, of course, your refinery, the best one you can get, the better it's going to be. And with the more bins, means you can have more resources. You can have stuff like gold, platinum, palladium, and the other one to be able to hold material and, you know, keep refining as quickly as possible. And then, of course, you're going to want your detailed surface scanner. So that way you can find these different ring sites, scan them down, and see what their reserve is like. If it's pristine or 
what type of ring they are, if it's metallic or metal rich or rocky or icy, etc. And then of course your advanced discovery scanner is going to be useful because as soon as you arrive at that extraction point, or not even the extraction point, the solar system right next to the sun, you can scan it and you can scan extreme ranges out there without missing any gas giant or any ring or asteroid belt. And that makes it more efficient for you because it could turn out that these first few ones really aren't to your liking. They're not metallic, they're not pristine, but the one all the way at the end could be. And you could have missed it if you had a lesser scanner. But of course it's expensive, it's 1.5 million. And at first you may not be able to afford that, but that's why I recommend that you get into some bounty hunting at first. And then from there you can switch on over to this if this is what you prefer. Or you could do some trading and then jump over to this. And of course, we don't want to forget, let me back up here, an important aspect to all of this, we're going to need to go to our navigation panel, actually view, go down to economy, and select extraction points. There are some different systems you can take a look at that could give you some, but extraction points are your best bet right now. And of course, you're going to want to filter out your show trade routes to just metals, so that way you can see where they're exporting to. And then once you do that, you could start zooming out and taking a look at all the different systems. But don't bother looking around the systems near Akinar or Sol System or whatever the independent system is. Make sure you're around 200 light years away because that's when I started to notice quite a bit more pristine. And again, that one sector, let's take a look at it. 14i Orionis. We don't need to fill it all out. I mean, just take a look at this system. Nothing but pristine as far as the eye can see. Several metallic. And again, the one you're looking for is metallic. You're not looking for metal rich. Unless you have a specific use for whatever it is you're doing. But metallic is the one you're going to want. Alright, well I hope this video has helped you in being able to help you start off on your path to being a miner. And it's definitely made it a lot more profitable. And if you want to use this site, feel free. It's right there. It's pristine. And it's going to provide some player with tons of credits. I hope you enjoy and I'll see you in the next video. The next video is probably going to have to do with exploring. So we're probably going to do some exploring on that video. And then eventually I'll get around to doing some bounty hunting. I hope this helps and have fun. Make some money out there, Commander.